America's B-2 spirit enters Iranian airspace, silent, undetected. But suddenly, F-14 scramble, MiG-29s lock on. It's being chased, tracked, hunted. The world in shock. This could have been the headline if the B-2s had gone in alone. Because alone the B-2 is vulnerable, not built for dogfights, and stealth alone doesn't guarantee survival. But Operation Midnight Hammer wasn't just stealth. It was the most synchronized engineering strike in history. Over 125 U.S. aircraft, a submarine launching missiles, refueling tankers, electronic warfare jets, fighter escorts, the hidden guardians. No response, no detection. Iran's deepest nuclear sites neutralized, deep underground. This is how the impossible became reality, hour by hour, target by target. Operation Midnight Hammer. The curtain rises. Five days before the first B-2 Spirit bomber ever touched the sky, between June 15th and 20th, 2025, the United States quietly positioned an astonishing array of support assets across multiple continents. Over 30 KC-135 and KC-10 aerial tankers, essentially flying gas stations, deployed strategically to bases in Europe, like Ramstein in Germany, Moran and Rota in Spain, and La Hayes in Portugal. These tankers weren't glamorous, but without their ability to refuel aircraft mid-flight, Operation Midnight Hammer would be impossible. Tankers provided the crucial fuel lifeline for the B-2 bomber's marathon, 18-hour, 5,000-mile stealth journey. Simultaneously, the Pentagon played an elaborate game of deception, activating four additional B-2 spirits as decoys. Call signs Mighty 11 and Mighty 21 launched towards Guam in the Pacific Ocean. These stealthy ghosts of the skies flew toward Guam, intentionally drawing global attention westward, away from the real strike force. But why Guam? Because military planners understood enemy intelligence would closely watch these known Pacific routes. By guiding adversaries' eyes in the wrong direction, they ensured secrecy for the real B-2 strike group traveling eastward. At the stroke of midnight, on the night of June 20th, seven B-2 bombers lifted off silently from Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri. These weren't ordinary aircraft. They were B-2 Spirits, the most sophisticated stealth bombers in history. Invisible to radar due to their advanced radar-absorbing skin, composite structure, and unique flying wing design. Every system on board, from engines to weapon bays, was designed to keep them hidden. MCON, or Emission Control Protocols, were security enforced. This meant all electronic emissions, including radio and radar signals, were suppressed to prevent enemy detection. Even the smallest emission could betray their presence, turning a mission of secrecy into catastrophe. In the early hours of June 21st, the B-2 spirits soared quietly over the Atlantic, Mediterranean, and North African skies. The carefully choreographed ballet continued. Aerial tankers loitered in remote, ADSB-free airspace, areas away from civilian tracking systems, making the tankers virtually invisible to public radar. ADSB, Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, is typically used by civilian aviation to track aircraft via broadcasted signals. Multiple mid-air refueling operations occurred seamlessly, without a single breach in radio silence. Imagine refueling a massive bomber in pitch-black darkness at 30,000 feet, hundreds of miles from land. During refueling, F-A-18 Super Hornet fighters circled protectively around the tankers and B-2 bombers, providing critical defense, as neither tankers nor bombers possess defensive air combat capabilities. By mid-afternoon, June 21st, as the B-2s approached Middle Eastern airspace, they integrated seamlessly with an immense escort and support package waiting in CENTCOM's region. This protective shield included 
F-22 Raptors, renowned for their superior stealth and air dominance capabilities. F-35 Lightning II fighters equipped with cutting-edge sensors and electronic warfare systems. And EA-18G Growlers, the U.S. Navy's advanced electronic warfare aircraft. The Growlers employed sophisticated ANALQ-218 receivers and ALQ-99 tactical jamming pods designed specifically to blind and confuse enemy radar and communications, effectively creating electronic invisibility. The Raptors and Lightnings provided essential air superiority, tasked with neutralizing any aerial threats before they could approach the bombers. Their sophisticated sensors enabled early detection and swift elimination of potential threats, ensuring a secure corridor for the B-2s. At precisely 5 p.m. ET on June 21st, other components of Operation Midnight Hammer silently moved into position. Deep beneath the waves in the Arabian Sea, a stealthy U.S. Navy-guided missile submarine initiated the first strategic strike by launching over two dozen Tomahawk cruise missiles toward Isfahan's nuclear facility. These missiles, renowned for their pinpoint accuracy, acted like surgical scalpels, targeting Iran's nuclear facility in Isfahan. The Tomahawk missile's precision allowed it to eliminate critical surface infrastructure, knocking out power and command centers, essentially crippling the site's defenses. This strike successfully diverted Iranian military focus and defenses toward Isfahan, leaving the path clear and significantly reducing vigilance around the primary targets of Natanz and Fordo. Concurrently, U.S. fighter jets entered Iranian airspace with tremendous speed and started executing SEED mission, suppression of enemy air defenses. SEED involves using radar-seeking missiles like AGM-88 HARMS and advanced AAGMs to detect and neutralize enemy radar installations swiftly, eliminating threats posed by surface-to-air missiles. High above Iranian skies, a fleet of EA-18G Growlers, the maestros of electronic warfare, joined forces with stealthy F-22 Raptors and advanced F-35 Lightning fighters. Growlers specialized in electronic deception and jamming, emitting a chaotic storm of signals that blinded Iranian radar and communications. Equipped with sophisticated AN-ALQ-218 receivers and ALQ-99 jamming pods, Growlers created an electronic shield, effectively masking the bomber's movements. At the same time, F-22s and F-35s, with their stealth capabilities and unmatched sensor arrays, hunted down and neutralized any active radar sites using AGM-88 harm and advanced ARGM missiles, fast, precise, radar-seeking weapons designed specifically to suppress enemy air defenses. These high-speed strikes created safe air corridors for the incoming B-2 spirits. Meanwhile, to compound the deception, ADM-160 miniature air-launched decoys, MALDs, were deployed. MALDs are unmanned drones designed to mimic the radar signatures of combat aircraft. Once airborne, they saturate enemy radar systems with numerous false aircraft signals, causing defense systems to engage phantom targets and masking the genuine movements and positions of actual U.S. aircraft. It was pure chaos engineered in the skies precisely the intention. At precisely 6.40 p.m. ET, 2.10 a.m. local Iranian time, the main strike group reached their primary objectives, the deeply fortified nuclear enrichment facilities at Fordow and Natanz. These sites were specifically chosen because of their critical roles in Iran's nuclear program and their heavily fortified underground construction, requiring the unique penetration and destructive capabilities provided exclusively by the massive ordnance penetrators, MOPS. The B-2 was uniquely suited for delivering MOPS due to its stealth characteristics and large payload capacity. Each 30,000-pound MOP constructed from specialized hardened steel alloys, was designed to penetrate over 200 feet of reinforced concrete and earth. From 40,000 feet, invisible and silent, the B-2 bombers unleashed their strategic payload, 
14 30,000 pound GBU-57 massive ordnance penetrators. Altitude of around 40,000 feet was essential because this altitude allowed the mop to achieve maximum kinetic energy and accuracy upon descent. Each bunker buster navigated precisely to its target using an advanced guidance system, combining GPS, which provided continuous satellite-based location data, and inertial navigation, which used onboard sensors to calculate the bunker buster's position and movement independently. These two systems worked together to ensure accurate trajectory calculations, making real-time adjustments through movable fins to achieve pinpoint accuracy upon impact. Over the next 25 minutes, each of the seven stealth bombers dropped two mops, totaling 14 bombs precisely targeting critical access points, shafts, ventilation systems, and command facilities within the bunkers. Each mop bunker buster capable of creating miniature earthquakes, collapsing tunnels, and disabling deeply buried nuclear equipment, inaccessible by any other weapon. Satellite imagery later confirmed massive craters and collapsed underground chambers, especially at Fordo, the most heavily fortified target. The final stroke of genius came moments later. The submarine launched Tomahawks, timed perfectly, slammed into Isfahan, after the bunker busters had detonated underground, further compounding Iran's confusion and ensuring no coherent response could be mounted. The precision and synchronization were flawless, a perfectly timed symphony of stealth, deception, and firepower. Immediately afterward, the B-2s executed their meticulously planned exfiltration, maintaining strict radio silence. They exited Iranian airspace as silently and invisibly as they had entered. Rendezvous with aerial tankers occurred over Iraq, seamlessly and safely. F-22 Raptors joined the formation, escorting the bombers home, their sensors scanning diligently for threats that never materialized. Astonishingly, throughout the entire operation, entry, strike and withdrawal, not a single Iranian surface-to-air missile was fired, nor was a fighter jet scrambled. The stealth cloak remained completely unbroken. As dawn broke, the message was clear. Operation Midnight Hammer wasn't just about stealth bombers. It was a symphony of engineering brilliance. It was a message. A message sent in absolute silence and received with global shock. But here's what I want to ask you. Could any other country pull this off with the same level of precision and invisibility? How far behind are China or Russia in developing this kind of stealth strike capability? And will this mission ignite a new arms race for bunker busters and next-gen stealth bombers? And perhaps most important, does this guarantee silence from Iran or set the stage for something even bigger? Drop your thoughts below. I read every single comment. And if this breakdown gave you a deeper understanding of how modern defense technology really works, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic deep dives into the world's biggest defense technology, mega projects, and engineering marvels. Thank you for watching till the end.